Hey, Kim. Hey, Kirsty. <laughs> Welcome to our third season. I am so excited. I can't. Hooray! Oh, Confetti. <laughs> season three. Woohoo! So excited. Yeah, yes. we're doing some different things, right? We are. We are doing some different things for season three. And don't worry, because we will still be bringing you the amazing behind the scenes interviews with all of your favorite recently published picture books. But we are adding a little bit more content in a new way. And one of those we ways are. is what we're going to do today. We're going to add in some how-to sessions. That's what we're calling them. The first Tuesday of every month will be an episode with you and me. Just you and me. A special episode of the two of us, I know, where we get to share some of the wisdom and knowledge we've gained along our journey as published authors in different ways. And what are we doing for this month, Kirsty? So this month, we are talking about how to get your picture book traditionally published. And this is a question that gets asked of us all the time, which is why we are talking about it on the podcast. And so if you are already a traditionally published author, we hope that you will share this episode with people who ask you this question. Mm -hmm. And if you are pre-published, we hope that you find some things that you can learn from this. Yeah, you're in the right spot. You found it, which is great. Exactly. We're going to organize this episode into categories for resources. We have four different categories of resources. We have community resources, course resources, book resources, of course, and online resources. So so we're going to get started with community resources. Should we jump right in, Kirsten? Yes. Okay. The first thing a lot of us as published authors and illustrators think about when we get asked this question is the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators, SCBWI. It is an amazing resource for not only new authors, but published authors as well. One of the main things, or I think one of the big things, maybe not the main thing, but the big things that uh, SCBWI offers is connection to other writers and illustrators. So if you are new to writing and you are looking for a critique group, and if you're new to writing, you should be. You are looking for a critique group. (laughs) That's right. You should be looking for a critique group. (laughs) BBWI is one of the places where you can find one. So SCBWI is a huge, huge resource that all new authors, I think, should at least check out. Also, SCBWI organizes conferences. And so it's a really good way to network, meet other people, learn the craft, and become a published author. Absolutely. Okay. So another of the community resources is 12 by 12. And if you've been listening to our podcast, you know that we love 12 by 12. It totally transforms my writing life. I'm pretty sure... Same for you, Kim, right? Yes. Yes. Julie Headland runs the 12 by 12. We actually have an episode where we highlight her book, Overbear Underwear. Overbear Underwear. Check it out. Episode 68. The 12 by 12 is this beautiful community. It's over a thousand, might even be up to 2,000 people now, where the challenge is to write one picture book per month and revise one picture book per month. And what happens is we have a Facebook group, we have an online forum where you can get critiques on any of your work and you critique other people's and you can ask any question you want on the Facebook group and dozens of people will answer. You can ask, what's a good onomatopoeia for rain or something like that? And you will get many, many answers. So one of our best resources. Absolutely. 12 by 12 is one of the main resources I always suggest to people. The only thing about 12 by 12 is the registration is only open during January and February. So you have to make sure that you check into that at the right time. Otherwise you miss the registration. You get a webinar. It does cost money. I will, for me, I feel it's worth it. Absolutely. They offer scholarships for those that are having hardships. So 
please check that out. And if you are having hardship, you can always apply for one of those scholarships. But I did also want to mention, not only is it a great community where you can share your work and others will share with you, but you also, you get access to a webinar every month with either other authors or, or illustrators, editors, agents. It's a wealth of knowledge and We would be remiss if we did not mention 12 by 12, for sure. Also, one last perk. If you were a gold member, you you can submit your work to agents and get them to the top of the slush pile. And that is actually how I got my first agent. So it works. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yes. Okay. Those are our community resources. Let's move on to course resources. The first one I'm going to mention is the first course that I ever took was at the Children's Book Academy, which is online. And Mira Reisberg is the head of Children's Book Academy. That's actually where I found part of my community as well. So I feel like some of these are overlapping. But Children's Book Academy has a bunch of different courses, not just picture books. So if you're looking to write chapter books or middle grade, they have some resources there as well. But through the courses, they offer an opportunity to connect with other writers in the group who are taking the course and create a critique group. That's actually where I met some of my very first writing friends that I still have today. And they're getting published and we're all getting published and it's so exciting. I also took several of their courses. So they're well-researched and well done. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another course I really loved is Making Picture Book Magic. And Susanna Hill teaches that course and it is phenomenal. It is so good, especially if you're just learning how to write a picture book. And and even if you're not, it's a good resource and a good way to review things and relearn things that you want to know about writing a better picture book. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. I think even published authors, I know for me, I'm always looking for courses that I can take to improve my craft. So learning never stops. It should not anyway. It should not stop. I want to mention the Writing Barn because the Writing Barn has so many amazing courses and instructors. (laughs) Yes. I mean, we had Bethany Hegedus on for her book, Huddle Up, Cuddle Up on episode 28. She is an amazing human and writer, and she has created this resource. It's online and there's, there's webinars, there's courses, it's jam packed with so much information. So if you're looking for ways to improve your craft, again, whether you're pre-published or published, the writing barn is definitely something we recommend. Yes. And the last course we're going to talk about specifically, and there are many, many, we cannot cover everything. This list no. is not exhaustive, right? No, it's not. This is it's a not. Short- this is a short podcast. We can't do it all. But <laughs> I do want to talk about Lyrical Language Lab, which is taught by Renee Latulip. And she we actually highlighted her book, The Crab Ballet, on episode 84. Yes. But I took that course and it changed my life in terms of my ability to write rhyming poetry and other types of poetry. And many of my books are written in rhyme. And the reason I was able to get published in rhyme is in large part because I took this course from Renee. So it's a brilliant. So would you say if you write in rhyme, it's a must take? Yes. If you write in rhyme, you must take this course. (laughs) Yes. Okay. Good to note. One more we need to mention is highlights. Oh, yes, yes. We Highlights. We love highlights. Highlights Foundation um, is located in Pennsylvania. So if you can go to highlights for a course or a retreat, we highly, highly recommend that if you're able to do that. That is an amazing experience like none other. But they also offer online courses that are so, so valuable. So the Highlights Foundation, we want to make sure we get in there for a a course resource. Yes, definitely. Also, we have a few books we want to talk to you about. This first one is Writing Picture Books by Anne Whitford Paul. You must read this book if you want to write picture books. It is so well-researched, well-written, concrete, easy Mm -hmm. to follow and to learn from. 
So this is the very first book that I read about writing picture books and it definitely helped me. It's really laid out so, so well, the structure of it to, to follow. I actually didn't find this book right away and I wish I had found it at the beginning of my writing journey because I feel like I might've been able to <laughs> skip some hard steps, um, but that's okay. So that's a great resource when you're learning about writing stories and starting to write stories. I have a book resource that I use consistently when I am writing and revising my stories. It should be when I'm revising because it's at the word level of revision, but it can also help as I'm trying to develop my characters. And that book is The Emotion Thesaurus. And there are several of these thesauruses. There's the negative trait thesaurus and the positive trait thesaurus. There are so many of these books and they're so helpful. Again, just they're really, really helpful as far as one thing that picture book authors need to be aware of, which is showing, not telling. And those books are a huge, huge help with that. Great. And so next we have online resources. And the first resource we want to talk about is called StoryStorm. And Tara Lazar started StoryStorm many years ago. And we actually did highlight her book, Bloop, yes. on episode 71. So check that out. <laughs> Anyway, StoryStorm is all about ideas, and it's in January, and every day there's a post about how to come up with ideas. And so it's very useful, very helpful, especially if you're trying to write and maybe you're having a hard time coming up with mm -hmm. ideas. Yes, exactly. Uh, those posts actually are still there now. So even though StoryStorm doesn't start in, until January... All of the old archived posts are still there. So if you're having trouble coming up with ideas, find Tara's website in our show notes. We'll link to it and you can find old posts to help kind of get those juices flowing. Yes. Okay. So our next resource is near and dear to our hearts. Yes. Yes. It's how we connected, Kirsty. Very, it's the very how beginning. We met. It is. This <laughs> online resource is not to be missed. It is the Writer's Rumpus online blog. There are so many amazing posts. There's interviews with your favorite authors, illustrators. There are posts about the ups and downs of writing. There's tips about how to get unstuck. It's a myriad of blog posts that I think are super, super helpful. There are posts every Tuesday and Friday. So that is definitely, definitely one of the resources we need to make sure everyone knows about. That was some of our first blogging experience, mine and yours, right? Yes. My very first blogging experience for writing was on bibliotherapeutic books, and it is actually in the archives of Writer's Rumpus. And Writer's mm. Rumpus is also a critique group, and that's where we met. That's where Writer's we met. Rumpus it's an in-person critique group. So we're lucky we live close to each other, so we could meet there. Yes. Super lucky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. The next online resource that we really love is Kidlet411. And there is so much information. If you just go to Kidlet411, there's also a Facebook page. There's the blog page. And you can search and find basically the answer to any of your questions. I think so. I know. If you it's have the like question, in Google. someone <laughs> else has probably already asked it. Yes. And if... I'm not mistaken. That one's more than just picture books, right, Kirsty? That's all kidlit? Yes, it's all yes. types of kidlit. Okay, great. Our next online resource is actually another author that we've featured on our podcast actually very, very early on. Uh, season one, episode four was Josh <laughs> Fung. He was on for his Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast book, I book four, short and sweet. And Josh actually gets this question a lot as well. And so he has on his website, a list of resources similar to what this podcast episode is. So if we've missed it again, because it's a short podcast, there's a really good chance Josh has it on his website. So definitely, definitely check out Josh Funk's website for additional resources. Yes. Definitely. He published. does such a great job. Mm -hmm. And our last online resource that we want to talk about is Refo Remo, which I 
ran for many years with yes, you Carrie did. Brown. We so just, much work. I know it's so much work. We just <laughs> passed it off to Lynn Marie, who we also highlighted on a podcast. We did. Um, we did. We did. Moldy locks and the Moldy stairs. Locks. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> she she is now doing it for with Rate Your Story. So if you want to check it out, but. Rifo Remo is still running. We still have the blog. You can check this out any time of year, but what we have is about eight years worth of master classes. And it's all about mentor things because we need to remember as writers that to become a good writer starts with reading really stellar books. Yeah. And knowing welcome to what the works picture for book me. Look what podcast. doesn't work for me? How can I I'm infuse this into my writing? So I'm with Rifo Remo, we would have Together we'll share authors, some of illustrators, editors, and agents chat with their creators write a post for every day of March. Story and idea each book person shelf. would share a We'd topic, to something about writing picture we'll books, like a picture great book beginnings level. or epistolary picture books or how-to picture books or nonfiction picture books. And then they would share five really stellar examples of that type of writing. And so over the month, you end up reading about 105 books. That's and incredible. As, and I learn so much every year that I do it. And it just helps in terms of when you read, the more really good books you read, the better you write. It's just the way it is. Absolutely. And these are books that you can find at your local library. So... You don't have to go out and buy all of these books, although you're going to find that you're going to want to, want to. <laughs> because if you're writing picture books, then you love picture books love and, books. and uh, you know, you have a hard time saying no saying to buying saying picture, books. picture books, but you don't have but, to, yeah. you can find them all at your library. And if your library doesn't have them, the best thing you can do for an author is to request them. So don't be shy to speak to your librarian. They want to know what kind of books their patrons want to read. Exactly. I just want to say thank you to Kiersey and to Carrie for that amazing resource that you've created and started and for Lynn for continuing it. It's outstanding. I mean, how many years was it that you, that you eight, did it? Seven or eight, seven seven or eight years eight. times 30 posts or how many posts in a month? Like there are so many amazing masterclasses there for authors who are published or pre-published. I mean, it's, it's gold. Let's just be honest. <laughs> it's gold. Thank you, Thank you Kirsty. Thank you, Kirsty. <laughs> okay. So that's going to do it for our list of resources for now. There's a lot there. Don't worry if you didn't take notes because you were walking your dog or folding your laundry or driving in your car, all of the links to all of these resources will be in our show notes. So it'll be easy for you to just click and get you exactly where you need to be. We also will have in our show notes something a little different that we're starting, which we're excited to offer this season, which I know I'm so excited, which is we have joined Patreon and we would love your support because it takes a lot to create this podcast, a lot of time and money to have these resources to bring you this show. And we love bringing you this show. So we, we would so appreciate your support and the Patreon. We have three different levels. There'll be a link so that you can check them all out, but they're going to offer you things like ad free versions of our episodes. One thing we're starting this season is video recordings of our episodes. We tend to record about 30 minutes you know, for our interviews, but we have to cut them down because our podcast is short and sweet and there's things that we, we just have to cut out and it's so hard to cut, but the video episodes that you can get access to by becoming a Patreon member will have the full episodes, the full interviews. And then there's also an opportunity to get a bonus live call with Kirsty and myself once a month for 30 minutes and you can ask us your questions. So if there were something that came up about how to get published that you want to ask us, that would be a great opportunity. So excited to interact with you a little more. Yes, I know. We want to engage with you, our lookers. We're calling you our lookers. 
Yes, our we lookers. We feel like it's only appropriate. <laughs> we feel like we know look. how beautiful we all are. <laughs> That's right. Inside and out. I love it. Well, this was so fun, Kirsty. I love so that we fun. did this episode and hopefully there'll be some information from us that our lookers can take away and help on their writing journey. Definitely. Wonderful. Okay. Until next time. All right. Happy looking. Happy looking.